What's good, all of my favorite theologians out there. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Friday, and on Fridays, I like to take questions and give answers, but I want to do something slightly different today. I want to tell you about an, an encounter that I had playing basketball with a black Hebrew Israelite. And I want to tell you the story because I hope that it helps you make a defense of your faith. So I'm playing basketball at the gym. Guy walks in, looks like he's a black Hebrew Israelite. Not just because he's black. Guy has a big beard. Not just because he has a big beard. What was the dead ringer to me? I could have been wrong about this. So this was just, this was uh, me just assuming. Uh, but he had this shirt on and he had fringes around his shirt, almost like tassels, uh, something like what the Pharisees would have had on. Guy has these uh, fringes around his shirt. I assume this guy's a black Hebrew Israelite. We started playing basketball. Jim clears out. It's just me and him. We're shooting around. He asked me the question that I did not want to be asked. <laughs> and you know what question that was based on my profession. He asked me, he said, what do you do for a living? And I was like, oh. I don't want to answer this question. If I answer this question, I'm going to be in here with this guy all day. And I'm just trying to keep my jump shot wet and keep my handles tight because my wife knows that if pastoring does not work out, that my fallback plan is to go to the NBA. I digress. So we, so he asked me, I tell him I'm a pastor. <laughs> he, um, he says, Oh, you are the one I need to talk to. You are the one I need to talk to. And, uh, so, so we begin to engage. He asked me what denomination was I a pastor of? I told him I was a Baptist pastor and he assumed something in our conversation. He said, you believe that Jesus died for everyone, don't you? And I said, absolutely not. This floored him, by the way, when I said this. When I told him, I did not believe that Jesus died for everyone in, 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 in the entire world. He said, well, then who did Jesus die for? I said, Jesus died for the elect. And this, this had this, this man was befuddled. He's, he's like, wait a minute, you are a black pastor, a uh, black Baptist pastor, and you don't believe that Jesus died for everyone, and you believe that Jesus died for the elect? I said, absolutely. This is where our paths diverged, though, because he said, who are the elect? And I told him, the elect? The elect is anyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, has placed faith in him by way of repentance and faith, has accepted the free offer of salvation. And he disagreed with my definition of who the elect are, because according to him, the elect is only the nation of Israel. And I asked him, I said, uh, so can white people be saved? And he said, he said, not the ones in America, at least, which I said, so how is an individual justified then? How can a person who's a sinner be justified? His, his definition of justification or how an individual can be justified was a mix of believing in Christ and works-based righteousness. And so here's what I would tell you. Whenever you are encountering anyone, not just black Hebrew, black Hebrew Israelites, but anytime you're encountering anyone that is appealing to the works of the law in order to be justified, in order to make a defense of your faith, you need to pin them to the law. They want the law. Give them all the law they can handle. And this is exactly what I did with this guy. Since he wanted to appeal to the law in order to be justified, I asked him, I said, have you ever broken God's law? I asked him, have you ever lusted after a woman? Have you ever broke the Sabbath? They believe I'm going, I'm wrong for going to church on Sunday. My question to him was, have you ever not kept the Sabbath? And we're talking about before you came to this knowledge that you are a black Hebrew Israelite, did you ever fail to keep the Sabbath? And his answer was the standard answer that you get whenever you pin somebody to the law. And that is, well, nobody's perfect. But the reality is someone is perfect. And his name is 
Jesus Christ. And he is the standard of perfection. He is the keeper of the law. And he's the one that gives us his righteousness so that we can be justified by faith in his finished work. That is That was not this guy's definition. And so I'm telling him, I'm preaching Jesus to him now, and I'm telling him about being justified by faith. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 3, verses 11, that no one is justified by works of the law. And then in verse 24, Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, the Apostle Paul said that this law, that this black Hebrew Israelite was depending on, was only a tutor, that it was a tutor that leads us to Christ. When you look at the Ten Commandments, it's not telling you of things that you can do in order to earn your way into heaven. The law of God is telling you that you are a lawbreaker and that you need a law keeper and the only law keeper that has ever existed has been or was and is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm pointing him to Christ and away from his own standard of righteousness, which is incomplete, insufficient, won't hold up on the day of judgment. And then I moved from there here. And I believe that this is fascinating. I showed him uh, the Apostle Paul. And you know, do you know who the Apostle Paul was? The Apostle Paul, for all of those individuals out there that's struggling with what the black Hebrew Israelites are saying, the Apostle Paul, you know what he was? The Apostle Paul was a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> he was a Hebrew Israelite. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. Paul says, if, if people have confidence in the flesh, I have more. And then he begins to list his credentials. Seven, what I, what I, what I would like to call seven bags of gold. Seven treasures that Paul holds up. Things that black Hebrew Israelites, like this gentleman, Things that they would die for. The Apostle Paul says, as it pertains to him being a black, him being a black Hebrew Israelite, him bring, being a Hebrew Israelite, Paul says this. Paul says that he was circumcised on the eighth day, that he was of the nation of Israel, that he was of the tribe of Benjamin. He knew his tribe. He said that he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, that when it came to the law, that he was a Pharisee, that when it came to zeal, that he was a persecutor of the church. And when it came to the righteousness that is found in the law, he was blameless. But verse number seven was the kicker. And this is what I showed the black Hebrew Israelite. I said, and do you know when Paul counted up, when he did all of the math, when he did his arithmetic, he counted all that up and he said that it was all manure. That being a Hebrew Israelite and knowing that he was a Hebrew Israelite, knowing what tribe he was from, knowing that he was circumcised on the eighth day, knowing that when it came to the righteousness uh, as it pertains in the law, that he was blameless. He counted all that up and he said that it was manure. Scubala is the word there, that it was dung. But what was of more importance to the Apostle Paul? He counted it all lost for the sake of knowing, not that he was right by keeping the law, but for the sake of knowing Jesus Christ. Here's what we have today. That, that when it comes, that, that, that when it comes to salvation, that salvation is by faith alone in Christ alone. Our righteousness will condemn us on the day of judgment. But if you, through repentance and faith, trust in Christ, Christ has earned for you all of the righteousness which is necessary for you to stand and be declared not guilty on the day of judgment. And that is what all, all individuals that espouse to be made right by some other way other than coming through Jesus Christ need to know. There's only two religions in the world. There's the religion of human achievement, what you do in order to try to be made right with God. And the second religion is the religion of divine accomplishment, which says that you are so bad that God knew you couldn't work your way up to him. He came down to where you are to bring you up to where he is. Listen, I hope this story was helpful. Uh, I'm so thankful for all of my subscribers. I need to say this. I'm so thankful for all of you all that have subscribed to my channel. It means more to me than you know. I'm, I'm just 
uh, trying to do my best with the, the YouTube channel. And I'm grateful every time, you know, that you click on, every time you watch the video, every time you share it, I greatly appreciate it. And I pray that God blesses you uh, for supporting this channel. Uh, I'm going to bring you, by God's grace, more lectures in the future. And in the meantime, as I always say, please remember that when it comes to good theology, all of your good theology is practical theology. Remember that, and I will see you on the next one.